Okay, so there's this uh, power supply that was in the kit, a VC523. So let's go ahead and uh, see if it actually works. Uh, I believe it's been played with before. The leads, leads look a little wonky on it, so I think it's been played with before. It's got this interesting adjustment on the side. What does that say? I need a magnifying glass. Uh, Helitrimo? Helitrim? Helitrim. Helis? H-E-L-I-Z? No, T. Helitrim. Helitrim. Model 191. Okay. Or model... No, wait a minute. It's upside down. Model 91. Okay. Helitrim Model 91. Didn't I don't know who makes this, but it's interesting that they uh, are able to mold that into this package. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so let's uh, let's get it hooked up. See if it works. So I have it hooked up here. Uh, input and output. Um, I think it would need a capacitor on the output, unless there's one on the inside. But it did. I don't know. The first time I tried it out, it didn't seem to work well with a, without a capacitor. So I have a, a one microfarad, uh, 250 volt capacitor on the output here. So let's turn on my meter. Uh, let's get this all on camera. Let's uh, turn on that so you can see it. And then I'll apply five volts. And oh, there we go, 188 volts. And then if I turn the little knob on the side of the package here, it goes up. Yeah, look at that. I can get 280 out of it. Oh, I'm above the rating of a capacitor, so let's bring it back down again. But yeah, at the very, very bottom, it's 183, which is plenty enough, right? Yeah, these are probably current limited, too, so probably works just fine. But we'll just leave it there until we uh, see if we can use it for our for our testing. All right, uh, so we haven't talked about these uh, these ICs yet. So this will be chip of the day. Chip of the day is a Sperry DD700. A DD700, and it just so happens I found a data sheet. <laughs> what, is, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds? And uh, let's see here, our DD700 is here, direct drive for display, BCD input, yes. Uh, six input decoder for seven. Yeah, this, there's one that's just, you give it whatever bits you want, but this one is decoded for seven segments. Uh, output current ratioed for, so it has, well, we'll see. It, it, you can program the brightness with this thing. Uh, ripple blanking, uh, blanking input, saturated switch, current regulated. Yeah, so it kind of does everything for you. Um, and it, interestingly, um, each element is slightly different size, and so it automatically changes the current for that segment. Um, anywhere from 0.93 to 1.1 or 1.25, C. C and E should be the same, right? C, no, they're a little bit different. So I don't know, it just, it, it somehow it balances them. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. This graph here is output current versus programming resistor. So yeah, let's talk about that. So the programming resistor uh, here is the 700. Let me move things a bit. So this is the part that we have. So you input four bits. It decodes it into uh, BCD. And then so zero through seven, or zero through eight, I guess. Zero through nine. Oh, no, zero through nine does. Yeah, zero through nine, right? Uh, then it's got some extras. We'll see, we'll see that. So anyway, it decodes those, has a blanking input. And then the outputs are currents. They, they have little current sources on all of the uh, segment outputs. And then at the very bottom is this uh, programming resistor. 
And so uh, you get to choose that resistor uh, here. So, oops. So this is the resistor value. So if you have a 10K resistor, then it's going to be around 0.35 milliamps. Anyway, that's the way that's all done. So that'll be kind of fun. Here's the truth table. I know this printout isn't great, but it, it's zero through nine, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Very cool. So it does hexadecimal. I like that. Um, Maximum rating is 7 volts for the part, but it's recommended, or, oh no, these are all maximum ratings. What's the recommended? Probably 5 volts, huh? Does it have recommended? No, it just has maxes. So it's probably a 5 volt part. Uh, yeah. All right. So that might be fun to play with. How many of these did I get? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got ten of them. Nice. All right. So the go to the next step. I think I want to do a PC board because I don't want to hand wire these. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, so if we had a socket and we had a part and the part would go in the socket. Oh, these leads are a little bit bent. Let's see here if I can actually get a get a part in a socket. Hmm. Oh, these are pain in the patootie. Oh man. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is not going to be fun. Yeah. If you've ever put Nixie tubes in sockets, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is like Nixie tubes times ten. <laughs> It's awful. Okay. So anyway, I think we'll do that. We'll make a PC board and we'll wire it up such that we will have these parts and a power supply program programming resistor. And then I'll use one of my little AT tiny parts to write some program and have this thing do a count or do something with it just for fun. Um, and see so if we can't make it go. Now, are some of these kind of the same? Yeah. I think I have a lot of, a lot of this size. I think one, two, three. These are plus and minuses, but that's okay. We can just rewrite the program. That's fine. So I think we have a lot more of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. Uh, these sizes we have three of. These sizes we have two of, and these sizes we have two of. So I think I'll, and these are bigger anyway. So yeah, let's go for the, go for the big guys. And uh, this is the Beckman Sperry 565. Five, five, and this is a 565. And this is a 565. A uh, three five four, and these are seven five threes. Interesting. Seven five threes. What's the difference? What's the difference? I don't see any difference. Hmm. What's their different voltage? Oh, they look exactly the same. Wow. I don't have to investigate that, figure out what the what the difference is here. Oh, these have extra decimal places. These have a couple little indicators down here, and these don't. Yeah, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out which one I want to lay out, and we'll do that. We'll lay out the PC board for the socket. And the reason that Nixie tubes are always on sockets is that the wire used is not solderable. Um, it's selected to make a good metal glass seal. So these, these poke through the glass. And so when they are heated up and the glass molds around them, you get a good seal. And these are gonna be the same, same thing. These wires are going to be 
kind of non-solderable, and that's why they always give you a socket. The sockets are solderable, so there you go.